So, we're going to start with the basics of what we understand about atoms, which make everything up. And we're going to do a quick review here that we now know, after a long process of hundreds of years of proposing ideas and then developing ways to gather more evidence, that atoms of every element are made up of three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are, pro are particles that have a positive charge, and relative to everything else in the atom, they do have mass. They contribute to the mass of the atoms. So we say they have about one AMU, one atomic mass unit of mass. Also in the nucleus, you have neutrons. Now, neutrons have no charge, or they're neutral. My little pet peeve on the side, no such thing as a neutral charge. You either have a charge or you don't. Neutrons have no charge, okay? And they also have mass about equivalent, just a tiny bit heavier than protons. So for our purposes, they each have one atomic mass unit worth of mass. And both of these particles you find in the core of the atom, the dense core called the nucleus, right? The structure that uh, the gold foil experiment gave us insight into uh, how atoms are structured, that there's dense cores of positive charge that it turns out also have uh, other particles that contribute to the mass that act as the glue. Because think about protons, they're all positive. What do you know about like charges? Likes repel each other. So if it weren't for neutrons, the only thing that would exist would be hydrogen. Um, so the neutrons kind of shield the positive protons from seeing each other and exert something else called strong nuclear force, which acts very short distances, subatomic distances, to hold the nucleus together. And the nucleus of an atom is the tiny central part. Most of an atom, turns out, is empty space. In that empty space, you have electrons. Electrons have the negative charge that counterbalances the positive charge of the protons. Their mass is 1 1836th of a proton. So we say that the mass of an electron is fairly negligible. It doesn't really count. It doesn't tip the scale. The analogy I've often made with my students in class is it's sort of like the difference if you put an elephant on a scale and weigh it in terms of tons and a fly lands on the back of the elephant, the scale, based on the scale we're reading it at, really isn't going to show the mass of the fly or the weight of the fly. And, and that's kind of the way electrons are relative to the rest of the atom. But they're in the big empty space around each nucleus buzzing around orbiting. And we're going to explore a little bit more in a later installment about how we describe that with something called quantum mechanics. But let's stay with some other basics. So two defining aspects, information you find on a periodic chart about every element. You have the atomic number, otherwise shorthanded as the Z number. That's the number of protons that's in an atom. And that's what defines which element it is. Because every sample, every atom of any given element will have the same number of protons. All samples of hydrogen have one proton. If it has two protons, it's not hydrogen, it's helium. Okay? So that's the one consistent aspect of every atom of any sample that's of a given element, okay? is the atomic number. So that's what we use to define what element an atom is or belongs to or is a sample of. The atomic mass is made up of protons and neutrons. Remember, protons and neutrons have about the same amount of mass. So we say they both contribute equally to the mass of an atom. So it's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. Now here's the thing. We can have different numbers of neutrons for samples of atoms of the same element. Okay? Different numbers of neutrons, so we call those things isotopes. The prefix iso, just like in geometry when you learn about isosceles triangles, have two sides that are the same. Isomers, a chemical term that we may come across in later installments. Elements with the same chemical formula but different structures. 
So iso means the same or similar. So isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they weigh different. Why do they weigh different? Because they have different numbers of neutrons. So the value in the chart for atomic mass is usually an average. It usually has a decimal attached to it because it's an average of all the different samples of that element. So the different versions or isotopes, the different atoms based on mass, all have the same number of protons, but because they have different numbers of neutrons. And they occur in different amounts, at least as what we've observed in nature. So based on our observations, the value in the chart is a weighted average. And what I mean by that is if 5% has a particular mass and 95% has a different mass, well, we factor that in and say the average mass is based on 95% of one version and 5% of the other. So atomic number, number of protons. Atomic mass, protons and neutrons. Notice electrons don't factor into this at all. But electrons are going to be very important when we talk about reactivity and bonding.